five, four, three, two. Um, this isn't iCarly. Hello, Hot Pog. Welcome to another amazing edition of Eagle Watch. Alongside Carly Connolly, I'm Brianna Selinski. We begin this episode with a look at the incredibly talented cast of the students over at the Hot Pog Middle School who performed The Lion King Jr. Will and Avery have the story. Hey, Hot Pog. I'm Avery. And I'm Will. And tonight, we went to the middle school to watch their performance of The Lion King Jr. Let's see the cast. What role do you play in the show? Scar. I play young Simba. Uh, I'm Mufasa. Pumbaa, the warthog that is buddies with Timon, which they are outcasts. What, what was your role in this production? Well, besides being a 10 foot tall giraffe, uh, my role on is stilts. on stilts. My role is a, a musical director. So anything that had to do with uh, group singing, solo singing, um, chamber singing, all went into this uh, production. Um, I think the most challenging thing for me was trying to balance the giant thing on my head. Next, we ask students about what went into making the show. What went into this production? Um, a lot. We've been here a long while. It took several hours every day for months, and it was just hard work every day. Um, lots of work and, like, like, a lot of effort. You need to be very social. Yeah. You need to be able to talk to people. You need to make sure that you're on time for everything. It's a lot, but it's very fun. So Mr. Hayes helped with the music. Coach Jamie helped with the dance. And Miss Siegel helped with the acting and blocking. And finally, we asked students what they liked most about being in this production. What's your favorite part about an experience like this? Uh, definitely the people. I've made a ton of new friends doing this show. I've had so much fun. Actually, like, we got a lot closer and we, like, talked and had a lot of fun and he had to yell at us a lot because we were having too much fun and we didn't get to work, so. My comment to that? Uh... Giving the audience a great show and spending time with your friends every day to have fun. All the cast did a wonderful job on the musical this year. And we're excited to see what's in store for the middle school next year. Signing off from Eagle Watch, I'm Will. And I'm Avery. Wow, that show looked fantastic. Congrats to the cast and the crew. Now let's head over to Bretton Woods Elementary School, where high school business students were teachers for the day. What's up, Hop Hog? I'm Ryan Raju. And I'm Jack McCarthy. And today, we're at Bretton Woods for the Junior Achievement Program. Let's go check it out. Junior Achievement is an event held every year to teach elementary students lessons about finance and money managing. Both high school and elementary students enjoy interacting with each other throughout the day. We got a chance to ask the lead volunteers and Bretton Woods Elementary School principal, Mr. Gagliardi, about the event. What is Junior Achievement? So, Junior Achievement is a nonprofit dedicated to increasing financial literacy for <laughs> kids. Yeah, Junior Achievement's been here for years. Uh, they come and work with our kids on uh, different things aligned with business and money and uh, entrepreneurship. So um, I think it's a great opportunity for our kids to learn about uh, what their futures could be, how to handle money. Uh, we're in our college and career week, so it works really, really well uh, in terms of uh, supporting that theme for the week. So we're really excited. 
We then got a chance to talk to some student volunteers and elementary students about the experience. What is your job today? My, my job is to teach kids about business and money. How do you do We teach them how to spend money, what to do with money. Uh, it's about it. Okay, so we taught them what was the job for them and what responsibilities went into that. So I'm a teacher today. Basically our goal is to make sure the kids have fun, but also learn something new. That's the goal of the entire event here today. What did you learn today? I learned about silly questions. Silly questions? Did you learn about anything else? I learned about birds. Birds? Did you learn about jobs? I learned about jobs. Ways to spend money. I learned about... Uh, I don't know. You don't remember anything you learned? Did you learn about jobs? Yes. What did you learn about jobs? I learned about jobs to clean up my room. About um, all different kinds of jobs and um, everybody, at almost like half of the people enter some of the jobs. Different, like what different kinds of men businesses there are and then like how to like create a business and stuff like that. Um, well, they taught us stuff about like businesses and how to start them and different like people who started businesses. We learned about economics, how to start a business. It looks like the Brentwood students had a blast at Junior Achievement Day. Signing off from Yuga Watch, I'm Ryan Raju. And I'm Jack McCarthy. Mr. Salvaggio really does a great job with Junior Achievement. And Carly, you did a great job interviewing our guest speaker, Eric Diebner. Let's check it out. On Thursday, February 2nd, Hopag High School alumni Eric Diebner came to the high school and spoke to Mr. Scheffler's broadcasting and film students. Mr. Diebner is an Emmy Award winning production sound mixer and has been in the business for over 17 years. Primarily do sound, uh, sound for TV. Um, I do tons of sports, ESPN. Um, I do Food Network and I've been doing it about 17 years and I've Travel all over the world and have loved every second of it. Mr. Diebner has worked on major TV shows, sports networks, short films, including the number one sports podcast on Spotify, and has worked with some of the biggest names in the industry. We asked Mr. Diebner to talk about the most rewarding part of his work. The most rewarding part is when you put together a story and something airs on TV that changes the world. Um, so if, if it's an emotional piece or something that is making positive change and you you were able to work on that and then it goes out to the world and it it's met with such positive uh, you know just it just changes things I think that's that's probably one of the best things. One of the highlights of the presentation was when Mr. Diebner showed the class an Emmy Award that he won. I'm just saying if you want to and you and you work hard at it and you meet the right people and you do things I went to the school, you know, I went to the school and look, look where I am, you know, I, I bought this, <laughs> you know, hey, I went to Hop Hog, like, I went to Hop Hog and I, and I <laughs> you know what I mean, like, I went to Hop Hog and I, I, I pulled that out, you know, I did that, you know, so like, you guys could do that, you know what I mean, it's, it's, it's a reality that, you know, it's, it's out there. The reality is out there that you can do it. What advice do you have for someone considering a career in the film industry? Um, I would say, obviously, go to school for it, you know, and, and learn a little bit about everything. It's good to know a little bit about everything, but find, find the thing that interests you the most and become really good at that one thing, you know. Um, it, you know, I'm not saying, you know, again, learn a little bit about everything, but become good at one thing, and that, that is what is gonna make you master something, and somebody's gonna hire you and pay you for that thing. Be passionate about the pieces that you're putting out to the world, too. Like, you don't wanna, you know, I never got into like the reality TV world. I never wanted to 
get into that. I always wanted to be have it both ways, where it's something that I love doing, and I'm also like proud of it when it goes out on air. And it, it never gets old when you see this stuff on TV, like when you guys get out there and you do your own stuff and you see it on TV. I remember, because I lived in Brooklyn for a while, there was a sports bar and I did a piece for ESPN and I was just walking and then they had like 30 TVs in the sports bar and it was the piece that I worked on. But it was being played and everybody was up looking at it, watching it, and it's just like, you, you get goosebumps, you're like, that's the piece I just did, you know, and it's, it's in a sports bar, you know, it's all over the nation, you know. It was a great experience hearing stories from a professional in the industry and a presentation that truly inspired students. Reporting for Eagle Watch, I'm Carly Connolly. Rocco and Brooke are back with Hop Hog Hotspots. This time they checked out a local sandwich shop. What's up Hop Hog? Today me and Brooke headed over to Capriati's, which is a new sandwich shop in the ShopRite shopping center. <laughs> I have heard some distasteful reviews, so why not? But, you know, I'm going to try it and give you guys the true review and let you guys know if it's worth your time. So let's head in there and we'll order food. Okay, I'm going to get the classic Italian and I'll do a medium. Medium classic Italian? Can I have a name for the order? Yeah, it's Watch, Eagle Watch. We're getting an exclusive tour of Capriati's right now, so come along. Yeah, follow me. Over here is our little salad station, so where we make our salad right here. These are our turkeys that we make fresh every night and we shred them. And now this is the VIP pass. Come here. Let's go guys. This is where we slice the meats. I know how to use this because I worked at a deli. I'm not allowed to use that. I'm not old enough. After our tour, Sarah showed us how to make an Italian. All right, guys, we're going to dig in. Charlie horse like that. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> this is a good sandwich. You know, I love an Italian sub. It's one of my favorite sandwiches. Um, and I would much prefer to go here rather than to go to a subway, you know, a little more homey, a little more hapagi. So yeah, it's pretty good. Let's finish it up. All right, Brooke is trying her brookie. Is it good? Oh, big boy! <laughs> Come again soon. I'll like walk you guys out. <laughs> Have a good night. So that was Capriati's, everyone. I have to say, I had a great time there. I think the staff was so nice. Sarah helped us out a lot. She gave us a tour. Um, very clean back there. You know, a lot of these places, you don't really know what's going on behind the counter, but I think it was pretty clean back there. The food was good. My sandwich was good. They have a lot of other options on that menu. Um, oh, we didn't get the lollipops. I the lollipop. <laughs> They did have lollipops, I didn't get one. Not a big deal. Um, I had a great time at Capriati's. I'd have to say, anyone who's like, was a little judgmental at first, I think you need to give it another shot. I would give this experience overall a 10 out of 10. This is the first 10 out of 10 in Hot Pot Hotspot history. So I think everyone should come check it out. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Mm, mm, mm. Now that, that looks delish. Any big Super Bowl plans, Carly? 
I'm not sure if I'll be watching because Joe Burrow isn't playing, but I'll definitely watch this next story where Ryan and Ethan found out Hop Hog Super Bowl predictions. What's up, Hop Hog? I'm Ethan Siegel. And I'm Ryan Rogers. With the Super Bowl just minutes away, we went around asking students their opinions on the game. Let's go check it out. Who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl this year? Kansas City Chiefs. Why is that? We got Pat Mahomes. I think the Chiefs are going to win. See, I don't know the other team in the Super Bowl, so I'm not going to say the Chiefs. Uh, I hope the Chiefs and, I mean, I think both teams are good. Uh, I think the Chiefs might have the advantage, though. They have the experience. I want the Kansas City, but I feel like the Eagles are going to win. I think the, the Chiefs are going to take it. Okay. Why do you think that? Because uh, they got the nastiest QB there is, Mahomes. And it's going to be a good game. Yeah, it's going to be close. Eagles. Why is that? Because they're just better. Okay, valid. The Chiefs. Why is that? Because of Patrick Mahomes. Yep. The New York Jets. They're not in the Super Bowl. In my heart, they are. I got the Chiefs over the Eagles, 27-23. What's your score prediction for the game? 29-37. Well, it's probably going to be like 24-10, to 10, maybe. Yeah. 28-20 Eagles. 32-17. I agree. Okay. Um, I think it's gonna be like 30 and like 26. No, cause if it's good team, just gonna be less touchdowns. So I'm gonna say what she said, 30, <laughs> so 24. Um, 100 to 50. The final score is gonna be 34-31 on a uh, game-winning kick by uh, Harrison Butker to win it for the Eagles. Who do you think the MVP of the game is gonna be? Travis Kelsey. I think Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes. Who's going to be the MVP of the game? Brian Dayball is going to win Super Bowl MVP. Why is, <laughs> Why is the Giants head coach going to win Super Bowl MVP? He's just like, he's built different. He's got that dog in him. He brought the Giants to a, uh, to a playoff appearance. They won their first game against the Vikings. He, he just deserves that Super Bowl MVP. If the Chiefs win, it's going to be Mahomes. There's a, there's a slight Travis Kelsey possibility, but I'm going with Mahomes. Here's what's going to happen. Zoom in. Zach Wilson is going to come out of the stands, run on the field, intercept the ball. He's going to run 100 yards. <laughs> wow, those are some really solid predictions. Personally, I think the Chiefs are going to win this year. Who do you think is going to win, Ethan? Absolutely nobody. Solid prediction, Ethan. Signing off from Mega Watch, I'm Ryan Raju. And I'm Ethan Siegel. Beautiful. I guess we're going to have to wait and see whose predictions come true. Next, Lindsay, Dom, and Moyo headed over to the PSI Love You basketball game to support the cause. Hey guys, it's Moyo and Lindsay, and we're here at the PS I Love You basketball game to check out what's happening. Tonight, Hop Hog JV and Varsity Basketball dedicated their game to the PS I Love You Foundation. PS I Love You was founded in order to bring attention to mental health and suicide prevention. This event brought the community together to raise awareness and funding. What does this game mean to you? Uh, today's game is really important to us because we unfortunately lose too many people to suicide every year, so it's really important that we raise money for everybody and everybody's families that go through it. I think it's just an important day for everyone that we can take time to think about ourselves and our wellness and the wellness of those around us. So it's a great opportunity for our whole school community to come together for something greater than ourselves. I think this game's really important because it brings awareness um, to suicide, to depression, and to help people not feel alone if they're struggling with something. Next, we had the opportunity to speak with Haley Kalesa, who organized the event. What did it take to organize this event? Um, well, first, I came up with the idea with my leadership class, and it's my personal service project. And then I designed the shirts that everyone's wearing tonight. And then I just kind of asked both teams, JV and Varsity, to part, like contribute into raising money. We're doing a raffle that I set up. It's a $100 Amazon gift card raffle. And we also have the concession stand open to raise money. JV came out on top with a score of 29 to 25 and Varsity with 53 to 33. It was a really close game, but ultimately Hoppa came out on top. It's amazing to see what a community can do when we come together. Signing off from Google Watch, it's Moyo and Lindsay. Great job to both teams. In the spirit of Valentine's Day, Sophia went around asking people who they wanted to be their Valentine. Hey, Hopog, do you ever wish you had a Valentine or that someone would want to be yours? Well, I'm here to do that. Let's go make some love connections. Who do you want to be your Valentine this year? 
John Margulies. Why? Because we've already been dating for like two years. Do you know Christian Russo? Yes. Do you want him to be your Valentine this year? Yes. Why? Because he's cute and we have a really good bond together. Who do you want to be your Valentine this year? Let me think about that one. Um, I think it's going to be Mr. Montgomery. <laughs> do you know Mrs. Montgomery? I think so, yes. Do you want her to be your Valentine this year? Yes, I do. Why? I love her. Who do you want to be your Valentine? JoJo. Do you know Stella Manicus? Yes. Do you want her to be your Valentine? Yes, I do. Why? Because she's just so amazing. It's just like, every time I see her, she brightens up my day. Tell us about your relationship. Hi, so yes, we've been together for a very, very long time. Right, babe? No. It's the best thing that ever happened to me. Honestly. But I hate it sometimes. It's so annoying. So clingy. Who do you want to be your Valentine this year? Uh, Abby Hartman. Hey. I don't know. I just want her to be it. Do you know Big Money? Of course I do. Do you want him to be your Valentine? Sure. Why? He's perfect. Who do you want to be your Valentine this year? Her. <laughs> do you know who that is? Yeah. Do you want him to be your Valentine this year? Uh, sure. Who do you want to be your Valentine this year? Nikki Zakowitz. Why? Because he's cute. Do you know Thomas Capone? Yes. Do you want him to be your Valentine? Yes. Why? Me, him, and Angie are in a three-way love triangle. Who do you want to be your Valentine this year? I was thinking about it. I think it's going to be Sophia White. Aww. Why? You know, I think she's funny. I think she's actually underrated. Who do you want to be your Valentine this year? I guess like Liam Clark Edgeworth. Why? He's so spicy and cute and I'm, I guess you can say I'm in love. Do you know Kay Barrett? I do know Kay Barrett. Do you want her to be your Valentine this year? Um, she's been my Valentine for a while. Tell us about your relationship. It all started seventh grade health class. We walked into Mr. Messino's classroom. Let's just say it was love at first sight. We actually got married in AP Lang in 10th grade. We didn't even put ourselves up for this, but we were nominated for class sweethearts. And then certain people Certain people took us off the ballot. I got a question for you. I, I've been looking at you and I was wondering if you want to be my Valentine. Yeah. <laughs> what a great job I did as Cupid this year. Have a good Valentine's Day, Hop Hog. See you next time. I wish I would got a Valentine. Bye <laughs> again. I see some real potential in those couples. In our next story, Kaylee asked students if junior year was really the hardest. A lot of people believe that junior year is the hardest year of high school. Today, I ran around to see if the students of Hop Hog agree. First, we went over to Miss Montera to see how she feels about junior year. Life in general can be very stressful, so can the whole high school experience, but it doesn't always have to be that way. Junior year certainly has a lot more responsibilities in terms of academics, as well as uh, personal and social relationships and all the things that students are balancing. Then we headed over to see how the juniors are feeling. What has been the most difficult or stressful part of junior year so far? Um, I think the most difficult part is probably um, the amount of tests that we have every single week. It's every week back-to-back -back tests and it never stops, so it's probably the hardest part for me. Probably like this past week getting ready for midterms because I have not paid attention all year and the fact that midterms is next week is terrifying. Definitely just the classes and just getting prepared for college. I would say like teachers are like really strict about him and like late work. I honestly think it's English. English class with the with the English regions and all that and the essays. Um probably all the tests and stuff that we have to do. Um having to think about college, I never really thought about it too much before this year, but now it's like starting to click that like I have to start doing stuff to like get into places. So what do you think contributes to the stress of junior year the most? What I think contributes to the stress of junior year the most is that juniors are balancing so many different things. Not only do you have strong academic classes like AP and IB classes, honors level classes, um, there's many extracurricular activities that students are involved in as they get into higher level grades. And I also think the other piece of information that makes students uh, very stressed in junior year is that they're planning for life after high school. So they're starting to think about uh, college and career opportunities and what it will be like once they graduate. 
Lastly, we heard from juniors and seniors. And has junior year been as hard as people have said it would be? Um, I definitely think so. Um, I think if I took advanced classes, it would be as hard. But I take like all normal classes and I don't think it's that hard. Um, I think, yeah, but like no, because, well, I committed, so I don't really have to like work as hard, I guess. Honestly, it just kind of feels like the same like last year. Yes, it has. It's been, it's been very hard. Honestly, not really. Junior year is supposedly the hardest year of high school. Do you think it lived up to that expectation? Yes. Why? Um, because like college, it's really stressful and chemistry. It was in some ways. I had the most classes, most amount of homework, but in terms of actual difficulty, it, it wasn't. Definitely. Why? Uh, physics. As an AP student, I think it definitely did, um, especially third quarter, because that's when like teachers start taking it seriously, and it gets really hard, and it's a lot of work, and you think you're not going to make it. But you do. You make it. <laughs> you make, you it. make it. What are some ways that students can deal with all the stress? Uh, lots of different ways that students can deal with stress. Uh, once again, we do encourage you to reach out to the adults in the Hop Hog High School that can help you. Teachers, staff members, your counselors. Another way that you can deal with stress is to make sure that you're just taking care of yourself. Make sure you're eating well, getting enough rest, and also making time for things that are most enjoyable to you, like friends and families and different types of activities that you enjoy. Seems like every student had a different junior year experience. Sending off the Eagle Watch, it's Kelly Mariani. How was junior year for you, Brie? Oh, to be honest, it was tough, but I survived. On the other hand, love is nice and easy. Take a look at these prospects for your future boo. Do you want to find your perfect match, especially with Valentine's Day right around the corner? Well, look no more. Brianna Solinsky here, and today we're going to be getting to know the students here at Hopbuck High School a little bit better, hopefully finding you your perfect match. What grade are you in and how old are you? I'm in 12th grade and I just turned 18. I am a junior and I'm 16 years old. I am a senior and I'm 17 years old. I'm in 11th grade and I'm 16 years old. I'm in 12th grade and I'm 17 years old. I'm in 12th grade and I'm 16 years old. I'm in 11th grade and I am 16. I'm a senior and today is my 18th birthday. I'm in 11th grade and I'm 16 years old. I am um, a senior somehow and I am 17. I'm a junior and I'm 17. I'm in 10th grade and I am 15. I'm in 11th grade and I'm 16. Describe yourself. I'm a bottle blonde. I guess some would say. I got light blue eyes. Look pretty good, I gotta say. I like to think I have nice teeth because I take care of them. Just let me know, everyone. I have a big Italian nose that I'm trying to fix with a nose job. I have small lips. I don't know if that's attractive, but um, yeah, I have strong athletic thighs. Um, I have nice lips, you know. You know, I'm okay looking. 5'4 with an attitude. A lot of people would say I'm pretty jacked. <laughs> um, big chest, big arms, <laughs> and I'm um, tall. What are your best qualities? My best qualities are that I'm caring, and I would be a good girlfriend, and I always was a good girlfriend. I think people think I'm funny. Why are the chicken girls their own? <laughs> I have no clue. I don't, I don't know jokes. I'm sorry. I could be nonchalant, but I could also be goofy. I'm deaf. I'm actually deaf, yeah. I've been a nice, loving person, nice person that's care that cares about people, cares about everything about them. My interactive and social skills, because I am a ladies' man. What are your hobbies, and what do you like to do on your free time? See, um, I'm a big kind of Saturday night, jump off roofs kind of guy. I enjoy going bowling. I enjoy playing croquet. I get Starbucks either once or twice a day. Play lots of Madden. I'm going to the gym. I do cheerleading. Maybe not for long, but. What's a special talent that you have or something that not everybody knows about oh, you? Oh, I, um, I can close one eye and like look like an American Girl doll. So I can go like this. And I can switch it and I can do the other one. I'm on the Olympic team for Team USA. I'm a very skilled person, athletic person. I play any sports. I like to say I'm a former D1 person. I can do a handstand. Some people may call it scary, but I'm actually like very good at, I wouldn't call it stalking, but I'm very good at finding. So just be careful. <laughs> Don't cross me. What is your idea of the perfect first date? I would, first I would like pick the girl up, take her to the movies, whatever, then like take her out to dinner. 
and bring her home, maybe like kiss her a little bit, you know. The first date, Burger King. When they take you in their car and they like open the door for you and then you go in and then they like drive you to like get food. I don't do dates. Picnic on a hill with the sunset, charcuterie board. I think it's Six Flags, I don't know. Chick-fil-A on the beach with a sunset. I would take someone out for sushi. The reason I say Burger King is because the two for 14, you can't beat that. What would you buy your Valentine for Valentine's Day? A Domino's gift card. Like a big stuffed animal. Something like funny from like that, like, you know, it was like cute, you know what I mean? A basket with like some, a stuffed animal, some like treats. I wouldn't buy anything for anyone but myself, so I get myself a stuffed animal and chocolate. I'm not the type to spend that much money, because you know, inflation stuff now. Probably like a private jet or like something like fun. Hopefully one of these lucky people caught your eye just right, especially in time for Valentine's Day. I know I would swipe right. On that note, see you next time, Hop Hog. Signing off, it's Brianna Selinski. Ladies, you like what you see? Woo! Wow, what a story. I'm speechless. Next up is another look at junior achievement. Hey, Hop Hog, it's Avery. And Brooke. And today we went around Forest Brook Elementary School asking students and staff about junior achievement. Let's go check it out. We asked Mr. Salvaggio some questions to learn more about junior achievement. Describe what junior achievement is. High school students are going to come in and teach five lessons throughout the day about financial literacy and they're going to get all the elementary school kids involved. Uh, they do it through using a bunch of different games and lessons and uh, it's going to take the entire period, the entire day for them to do this. We asked some high school students their role in Junior Achievement. What is your favorite part about Junior Achievement? I love the business aspect of it. We're teaching kids everything about business. Uh, just getting to interact with the kids and teach them a lot more than what they know and to help them improve in the world. How did you prepare for today? You know, we had some lessons. Uh, we like went out of class and we kind of practiced for today, my group. What was your lesson about today? Uh, communities at work. So I pretty much just taught them about different jobs in the community and how it helped better people. and what they can do to improve the community themselves. Yeah, we taught them uh, what saving and, and credit unions and banks are and withdrawing and depositing. What did you learn about today? Uh, money and how it's used. Why it's so important. Helping people. The value of money. How communities pay money to buy stuff. And how people can work in separate communities and work in peaceful environments. Can you show us your project that you made? Um, a little pizza we made. It's me walking the dog. And we made like some like books. I actually had to make pizza and then I got five dollars and I only made two pizzas because I didn't have enough time to do it. But then I tried to concentrate and then I got one more pizza done. So I only have two pizzas now. Was it different having a high school teacher teach you? No, not really. How about having your sister teach you? Yeah. <laughs> Was it cool having high schoolers teach you today? Yes. I liked when they went around and helped people. How does Junior Achievement benefit your students? I think the students really enjoy working with high schoolers and I guess just learning the principles of business and you know the hands-on work they really enjoy. Well, I think it's a great way for the students to interact with the high school students and they learn a little bit about the economy and they get to work in groups and they do these fun activities that involve problem solving and would cooperation, you like, yep, cooperation. Mm -hmm. and it's just a, a fun day for them as well as for us because we love seeing uh, prior students come back and they actually teach the class and they do a wonderful job. Looks like the students had a really great time learning about business. Signing off for Eagle Watch, it's Brooke and Avery. We're rich. Now it's time for Question of the Month where Jack went around asking about 2023 resolutions. Hey Hop Hog, it's Jack McCarthy reporting for Eagle Watch. Today we're going to see people's New Year's resolutions and are they actually following it? Do you have a New Year's resolution and if so, what is it? To stop eating as much Chick-fil-A. Get to school on time. Eat less candy. I do, and it's to try to read more books. Uh, I don't get as much free time to read as I used to. Uh, it's probably getting shape for summer, and yeah, it's, it's 
my year is resolution. Yes, it's um to not fail any classes. To get like really good grades. All right, my New Year's resolution is to walk into a store and uh, scream, what year is it? And when someone answers, I'll scream, yes, it worked, and run out of the store cheering. I want to go to the gym more and start working out more. Yes, I do. I want it to cut 20 pounds in about two months. Yes, and it's to get taller. Yes, my New Year's resolution is to stop wearing makeup to school every day. This year, I would like to have more students take IB courses. Yes, I do, and it's money. Do you believe in New Year's resolutions? I do. Uh, definitely believe in them. It's hard to keep up on them, though. Yes, I do. I don't believe in New Year's resolutions. Um, yeah, I believe uh, an individual can uh, better themselves. Sometimes. Yeah. I don't believe in New Year's resolutions. Yeah, I'm actually going to the after school shop, right? I think I do. Yeah, I do. I believe you stick with them, they'll, they'll come true. Yes. Uh, yeah. I believe in continuous reflection, maybe not necessarily at New Year's, but always thinking how we can improve every day. Yes. No. I no. do. New Year, new me. Yes, I do. Will you stick to it for the rest of my life? I'm going to do my best. I have two little kids at home, and I, uh, I'm here a lot working all the time, so hopefully I get to read more. We'll see. Yeah, I'll stick to it the whole year, for sure. Probably not. I'll do my best. Um, yeah, pretty sure I can make this one work. I hope. I mean, I think I will. Yes. I already failed. I already failed. <laughs> no. Yes, I've been doing really good this week, so yeah. I will. Thanks for watching, Hot Bog. We'll see at the end of the year if people actually follow their New Year's resolutions. For our final story, I spent some time with Ms. Sheen to learn about her social-emotional live stream. Hey Hop Hog, it's Bree Salinsky, and today I'm heading down to Ms. Sheen to hear a little bit about our self fitness and to watch her live stream. Let's go check it out. Reach all the way up, stack your hands in that rock right on top of your desk. You're sitting down, settle into it, breathe into your belly. What is self fitness and why is it so important? Mm. So, self fitness, S E L, social emotional learning. Fitness is pretty much like our emotional intelligence and connecting it to movement therapy so we can move the static, shift the mindset, reset the nervous system, and evolve the culture within ourselves and the growing students and the teachers to make us feel good so we understand that this is not a one-stop thing. What do you hope to achieve with these live streams? is to reach not just the students that I was in one classroom, that this live streaming is actually reaching all three elementary schools and now we're putting it out to the entire district so people in their offices, people in the schools, in the classrooms, teachers that have off on prep, that it's reaching more and more people and that this isn't just a phys ed thing. This is not just for the young puppies of the world, this is for all of us. And these little tiny things in short, consistent bouts can be extremely effective. No one gets a free pass. We need enough space around us. I want you to practice this move because it's gonna come in super tight and super fast. I want you to try to step forward, turn, step forward, turn, and you're back to me. How does this type of activity help someone throughout their day? Ah, so what we're trying to do is access the executive functions in the frontal lobe. So really, movement, right? breath work. It unlocks those things that help us with staying on task, organization, social skills, behavioral management, impulse control. Sometimes you feel super locked up. It's a real, real emotion. It's a real feeling. So today, we're going to move our bodies. We're going to feel grateful that we have these skills and these tools to possibly unlock the good stuff. What message do you have to someone who's on the fence about trying something like this? It's not about, and I love the fact that you just said try, because a lot of times people think we need to be perfect. A lot of times, like, you see the expression of what I'm doing, right? It's not about what you're seeing, it's what I'm being. So have that allow you to just inspire you to recognize that you don't need to be perfect. This is not about being a dancer at all. And actually, if you just start to feel the affect shift as you watch it, and then do it to where you feel you take pieces of it, 
then you start to feel the visceral, like the feeling inside change, and you might be like, huh, there's something to this. I don't need to be perfect because it's not about the trying your best. Just do your best. When you do your best, you can truly feel like at the end of the day, job well done. Even when life is hard, we still can move forward and we can pull on these tools and these skills that we've learned because we appreciate ourselves and others to know how to give to ourselves and others. It's taking care of ourselves so we can even feel thankful when things get hard and challenging. I had a great time talking with Miss Sheen and hearing all about self fitness. I'll be sure to try it out sometime. Sign up for Eagle Watch, it's Bree Slinsky. Well, that's all for this edition of Eagle Watch. Stay tuned for another episode coming soon. Thanks for watching. We'll, we'll see, see you next, next time. time. For our final story, I spent time with Miss Sheehan. No! Easy. Take a look at these prospects for your no. future. Marco! No. You no. it! No. Mr. Savaggio really does a great job with junior achievement. And Carly, you did a great job. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> mmm, mm. That looks delish. Any big super bib? <laughs> okay. You can touch me if you want to. <laughs> it was a tough one. <laughs> I thought you was about to start crying. I feel like I'm, I'm cheesing way too much. I can tell you that fan. Let me do you not a band. No, he was not there. We need you. Anytime you hit me, I was never not there. Mm, mm, mm.